Steph, if you're gonna have that cat hair thing, I I, I can't look you in the eye. It's, it's too freaking adorable. I, I just can't. I really enjoyed your Bucky photo shoot, your preview, because it looked intense and emotional. I can't wait to see the rest of it. And have fun at Autocon Vegas. Is she done being cute? Jake Lad! Best of luck at Mac Cafe. Good luck finishing the Aqualad cosplay. I know you will. I think it's impressive that you're going to cut your hair and bleach it for it. Like, we have some serious cosplayers on this channel. Your level of commitment is is impressive. I, I can never, I don't think I could ever do something like that. I like your resolutions, but don't be silly. You just started doing these videos and you're already great at it. So keep up the good work. Lulu, I wore the shirt for you. Yes, I am a little jealous, but it's engulfed with the happiness I am for you because I don't know who else would have loved that gift on as many levels as you did. I know what the Smashing Pumpkins means to you. And <gasps> you touched the CD case Billy Gorgon touched. Lucky. Nikki! I wasn't aware that the new director of Star Trek did some of the episodes of Community. Uh, which were they? Is it Jeff playing pool in shorts? The Pottery Class episode? Or where Abbott takes control of the chicken and becomes head of the family? As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a geek. No, let's let's not go down that path. You'll notice all the episodes I listed were season one references because I just started watching it and I just finished that season. So I'll be able to understand past conversations now. And if you're curious to know, yes, I love it. I'm mad at myself that I didn't start watching Community sooner. The point is that Nikki has made me more hopeful for the new Star Trek director. And that's what she does. She brings hope into our lives. Peggy Carter debuted this week and I'm going to give very quick thoughts. What's up with guys being chauvinistic oinkers? Like, a lot. But that just reflects the times then and now. Agent Carter is an ass kicker extraordinaire and a super classy day. And we got to see Jarvis! I'm really looking forward to more of this show. I was very impressed by the debut. So now it's time for the Ant-Man teaser trailer talk! Woo! I wanted to get like tiny ants and dub them and then dub my voice, but they all attack me at once. That's that's a natural thing. They do that. We saw some cool action stuff. The Ant-Man tune in all its glory. Michael Douglas as Hank Pym. Paul Rudd being a witty Scott Lang. I mean, he only said one line, but it was witty. The teaser did not make me excited for the movie because, don't get me wrong, it was awesome. It looked really good. But here's the thing. I never really loved or cared for the character of Ant-Man. I mean, I like Scott Lang. I like him a hell of a lot better than I do Hank Pym. Pym is a son of a bitch. How is he even still considered a hero? I don't know. He's done some messed up stuff. So it's great that the movie's going to focus on Scott Lang as Ant-Man because he's a lot, he's, it's a lot easier to root for him. Trust me, it is. Um, the movie comes out July. I will go see it. But unlike other Marvel movies where I have something invested in it because I either love the character or really like them, this one, eh, eh. so if it's great, good. If it's bad, it's only Ant-Man. Or maybe I'll do something magical and make me really fall in love with the character. Maybe. Comic review time! That's the reason you watch my videos. Probably not, but I like to pretend. Ant-Man issue 1, written by Nick Spencer, art by Ramon Rosanas. Scott Lang is a father, a next husband and the astonishing Ant-Man. He's trying to get his life together, find work, but more importantly, he's trying to be a good father and be there for his daughter. And his billion baby ant children, because they're, they're, all, they're all his children. He's the father of ants. This was everything you wanted in the first issue. Scott Lang is super likable and relatable. He's not a genius like Hank Pym, he's just an average dude. It's new reader friendly, you can go in and not know anything about anything and still understand the story. Nick Spencer is one of my favorite writers. If the movie doesn't make me care for this character, I bet Spencer can. The artwork by Ramonas is awesome, it's cool, it's stylish, I think he has an army of ants drawing for him. If you want to get to know Ant-Man before the movie, pick up this issue, I rated a buy and 5 out of 5. And finally, The Unbeatable Squirrel Girl, written by Ryan North, or by Erica Henderson. Squirrel girl, squirrel girl, she's a human, also a squirrel. She can climb up a tree, yes she can, easily, that's why her name is Squirrel Girl. And that's all can be found in this issue, and that should be reason enough to pick it up.
Doreen Green, aka Squirrel Girl, has just started college and is trying to balance her school duties with that of Protector of the World. First issue, she faces off against Craven the Hunter. It, this was a really fun, cool comic. It made me laugh. I love the running commentary at the bottom of each page. The artwork by Henderson is so charming, just so charming. Um, I really love comics with female leads, and this will totally surprise you, I think. So pick up Squirrel Girl, lend it to a friend, maybe they'll get their own copy. Just go out there and spread the word. Spread the word of Squirrel Girl. I rate this a buy and four and a half out of five. That's it for me. Remember to like, subscribe, all the other fun stuff. Check out the other more awesome geeks. I'll be back next week and fare thee well. I, I, I can't beatbox, but I, I can't say discoteca, muñeca, biblioteca, San Bigote Grande, perro manteca. Join Abbott in the morning.